Hi, it's Ron Moore here, and I thought I'd talk to you about the realities of being an entrepreneur, being in, in business, running your own business, a side hustle, an entrepreneur uh, in an entrepreneurial organization. And I have no notes here, so I am just going to chunder words all over you for the next 30 minutes or however long it takes. Um, because I uh, have been in business for 15 years successfully, uh, and what, five years not successfully. Uh, I've had some highs and flows and ebbs and lows. I've made millions, I've made some mistakes, uh, and I just thought it'd be nice to hear it from the horse's mouth. Um, and also, I, I would say right now, they are having some challenges uh, that uh, I'm going to beat, uh, I'm going to master, I'm going to grow through. Um, but you know, you could do 100 million quid plus, and you can still have challenges coming your way. So uh, yeah, uh, here we go in no particular order. Now, um, I think what a lot of people are looking for is the absolute answer, the binary um, right or wrong, the extreme. So some people are like, business is really hard. Business is really hard. You've got to hustle and struggle really hard. You know, you've got to work 12 hours a day for 10 years to be an overnight success. And then there are some people saying it's get rich quick, schemey, scammy, overnight bullshit. The reality, I believe, is somewhere in the middle. Can you be more successful than you ever dreamed if you work for yourself? Uh, yes. Can you grow a business that could reach millions of people, could do millions or tens or hundreds of millions of pounds? Yes. Are you likely to make tens or hundreds of millions of pounds or whatever it is you want uh, working you know, in, in a, an employed role? Not as likely. Um, so is it easier being an entrepreneur, running your own ship, uh, you know, having your own vision? Uh, is that easier than working in a job? It's different. Uh, so it depends what you want. It depends what your um, points of pain are and what you would tolerate and what you would not tolerate. So for me, freedom uh, and autonomy and the ability to pivot and go in whatever direction uh, I feel like, uh, uh, and, you know, getting paid first, not last, for me, that they are things that are hugely important to me. So even when they're hard, I'd prefer them to not having the freedom and not having the ability to choose or to pivot or to be disruptive. So, hey, look, you know, what's the, what's the area with the lowest downside that you'd be prepared to take? Now, sometimes people think that your problems go away when? They go away when you make five grand a month, 10 grand a month, 50 grand a month, 100 grand a month, 500 grand a month, a million a month. Um, I've had quite a few million pound months and the problems don't go away, I'm telling you. So all that happens is your problems change. Uh, and I think if one is lo looking for the delusional fantasy of one-sided happiness, all upside, no downside, you're in the wrong fucking business. In fact, you're in the wrong fucking life. Now, that's not to say you can't have happiness, fulfillment, achievement, success, impact, income through being an entrepreneur. In fact, it was being an entrepreneur that gave me all those things because being employed didn't. But that was also me, not just employment. Now, there are some people who are CEOs of big companies who earn £10 million a year or £2 million a year or £100 million a year. So kind of horses for courses. So for me, there's way more upside being an entrepreneur. But, you know, there's no ceiling, there's no one in your way, there's no one on the corporate ladder, there's no politics internally. Um, HR, well, it's my company, so come talk to me. So for me, there were less ceilings, there were less um, glass ceilings, there were less barriers. But man, when it's hard, it's hard. And um, when there's problems, your name's on the door, people blame you, you're fully responsible, you've got to roll up your sleeves and get shit done, even if you're supposed to be paying people to do that for you. That's also the reality of being an entrepreneur. So by the way, I've got loads more to come. But if you want to shout out for your business, your brand, your podcast, your website, uh, whatever you're promoting, if you're running an event and anything like that, then just hit me up with 500 stars and I will happily shout you out. If you write it in one to two lines, then everyone can see it on my feed. I have 140,500 people or so that like, it's like or follow. It's about 3,000 less likes or follows. 137 ones, nearly 141,000. Don't know what the difference is. Who fucking cares? All right. So um, can you get rich quicker 
being an entrepreneur? Well, I did. Um, and I didn't get rich at all when I was uh, employed. So um, is there such a thing as get rich quick? Well, there's such a thing as get rich quicker. There's such a thing as getting rich in a realistically short time frame, like years rather than decades. Probably not months, although I got out of debt. I got out of 50 grand's worth of debt and probably did six figures, um, just hit six figures within one year, maybe 18 months. So that was a big turnaround for me. Wasn't a millionaire overnight, but it, it, I think I became a millionaire between the age of 30 and 31. So yeah, look, that's what did I, when did I start progressive? 26, 27 years old. So hey, you know, that's, that's, I don't know, I'm quite happy with that. That's pretty quick, isn't it? Four years, something like that from minus. Um, did it come overnight? No. Did I work hard at the start? Yes. Um, was I pretty relentless? Yes. Um, but did I also burn my out, myself out at times and work a bit too hard at times? Yes. Um, now, I believe three good hours a day, deep dive, intense work, probably enough. Um, you should leverage as much as you manage, as much as you do. In fact, you should leverage more than you manage and you manage more than you do. Leverage, then manage, then do. And you should also work smart as well as hard. So when you're an entrepreneur, things like vision, strategy, things like how you're going to change the world, you know, creating a great product, masterminding a great launch, um, creating a culture, a disruptive, a passionate uh, environment, um, creating a story and a, mes a me message and a mission. These are all things that um, are what's, what being an entrepreneur is all about. And that is like, that's not hard work. That's the easiest hard work I've ever done in my life. That's fun. Um, so you can't call it hard work. Can't say, you know, even oh, being an entrepreneur, it's so hard, it's so hard, it's so hard. Well, um, you know, you're not going to the funeral of your 13-year-old son like um, Kobe Bryant's daughter's mother will be uh, and you're not um walking 20 miles to get water and you're not earning 20 grand a year and then get a pay rise to 21,000 then a year later pay rise to get 22 and then a year later to 23 and then a year later to 25 so you know a lot of people are down on how quickly you can get successful and wealthy um and they're like you got to slave for decades no you don't have to slave for decades um, Steve, you've shouted out yourself, but you haven't given me any stars. You need to hit me up with 500 stars before you do a shout out, just letting you know. Um, so there's 100, another 400. Keep going, keep going. By the way, 500 stars is only $5 to me. So bargain for you. Um, yeah, now um, it doesn't get easier, you get better. The problems don't go away, they change form. Um, when you put yourself out there and you grow and you become successful, you're always going to get critics. You're going to get people resist you. You're going to get people that, um, you know, that talk shit about you. There's going to be defamation. There's going to be lies. Um, you know, there's going to be also truth from critics. There's going to be feedback that you need to grow, to improve, um, that you'd be wise to listen to. Um, you, managing your emotions is like one of the single things that I think makes masterful entrepreneurs which is one of the hardest things, uh, and knowing when to hold it in and when to let it out, when to share it, when to shut up, when to listen and when to talk, when to step in, when to let go. Uh, and yeah, these are all the things that you learn as you go. Now, if you want to leverage that, get a mentor, listen to podcasts, listen to audiobooks, go on courses, um, s you know, study and follow other successful entrepreneurs, watch their live feeds. You know, follow them on all their social media, buy all their books, go on all their courses, go on their masterminds, get them as a mentor um, or figure it all out yourself. Now, some people say it's better to learn from your mistakes. I think it's better to educate yourself to make less mistakes. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I think it's better from, to learn vicariously from the mistakes of other people um, rather than learning them yourself. But it's better to learn them yourself than to not learn them at all or to only learn them in the classroom and not on the streets. Sam has asked, can I shout out my one day workshop for 500 stars? Yes, you can. You can shout out whatever you want for 500 stars on my live stream. Um, and if you watch the replay, by the way, then you can just um, put your link in uh, once you've given me 500 stars. That's fine. Um, so the offer is the same for everyone. Uh, I have 140,000 odd people um, that follow me on this page. So, hey, look, there's probably some good leverage for you in that. Bit of a win-win if you like. I'm just having some water. I'm just trying to do this with one hand. Have you got any questions for me, by the way? We'll do a bit of um, an impromptu, impromptu Q&A as well. So if you've got any questions about being an entrepreneur, 
the challenges, the struggles. I've had some of the best times of my life being an entrepreneur. I've had some of the most challenging times of my life being an entrepreneur. Most of the things I'm in, grateful in life for, my property portfolio, my business partner, who's an amazing person, uh, my team who are amazing, uh, my podcast, which is like the most fun thing ever, all my books, all the income, like most of the great things in my life have come from being an entrepreneur and some of the shit as well. Apart from my own podcast, what do you recommend? Oh, Ian, um, I have the disruptive entrepreneur. I also have money. I don't know if you know if I have a podcast called Money. Aside from those, I like the Joe Rogan podcast. I've, I enjoy some of the James Altucher show. I like Masters of Scale a lot. I like Trailblazers a lot. So there you go. There's four for you. Okay. Um, so you have to work hard enough not to have to work hard. But it's not all hard and it's not all easy. It's somewhere in the middle. Uh, you'll have your best times and your hardest times probably being an entrepreneur, just like with, with having children. You have some of the best times and the hardest times. Um, having children. And by the way, the harder times make the sweet times even sweeter. It will challenge you mentally, it will challenge you physically, it will challenge you emotionally. But you don't have to work 10 hours a day or 12 hours a day. I'm a great believer, you can work three hours a day. You can work five hours a day. Robin Sharma reckons five good deep dive hours a day. Uh, and um, that's more than enough good quality work that you need. Um, I've had times when I've been traveling around the world with my son, hardly working at all for months hardly checking into the office. And then there are times when I've been working like back to back to back to back to back. My diary at the moment is back to 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 back. New year, I'm like relentlessly in and then I'll be relentlessly out. Um, I like that freedom to be in and be out and to change and to pivot, which is why I had to be an entrepreneur. Um, Asma has asked me, do you think anyone could be an entrepreneur? Um, I think anyone could, but not everyone is most suited um, and I think uh, whether you, um, I think self-awareness, do you all want to be an intrapreneur, an employee, um, a lifestyle entrepreneur, um, or an empire builder? So lifestyle um, entrepreneur would be someone who would rather have choice and freedom rather than money and massive responsibility. So they might look at leveraged business models, systemized business models, online business models. They're not the ones that want to work 10 hours a day. They don't have to change the world. They don't want to make a dent in the universe. They don't want to reach millions of people. They might want three grand, five grand, 10 grand, 20 grand a month. And that's fine. And by the way, I'm cool with whatever you want to be. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an all-in entrepreneur. And that's me. Uh, and you can be a lifestyle entrepreneur. An empire builder, someone who wants to change the world, make a difference in the universe, go global, have a big legacy. Entrepreneurs, an entrepreneur is someone who has entrepreneurial traits and qualities and wants autonomy and freedom, but they want the safety and security of being employed. So, and I believe I have many entrepreneurs who work for me at Progressive Property. And then employed. Now, being employed is right for a lot of people. It's less um, risky in a lot of ways. Um, you know, like if something happened at Progressive or any of my companies, uh, Mark and I would have to be paid last. Um, everyone's paid before us. That's a reality. Uh, but, you know, when there's dividends and drawings, then, you know, Mark and I get them first because we're the shareholders. Uh, so, yeah, you know, we get the upside and we get the downside. I tell you, if things go wrong, I'll be selling my Lamborghini and I'll be selling my Ferrari and blah, 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 blah. Um, so, you know, the, the buck stops with me. I'm fully responsible. Um, when there's critique and trolling online, this at me. It's not really, really at my business partner. If my staff make mistakes, it's on me. Um, and you know what? I actually quite like that. I like the responsibility. I um, kind of, um, that makes me feel important. Um, Kieran has said, don't ever sell the Lambo. I'm not selling the Lambo. And you can buy it if I put it up for sale. But hey, look, you know what? Things are great at the moment in business. We are enjoying some challenges, but we're always enjoying challenges. I'm just open about what they are. Um, but uh, also, you know, we've got a very robust 13-year-old business, 15 years in property. Um, so, hey, uh, things are all... Like some people say to me, oh, I had a bad day today. I'm like, no, 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 no. There's no bad days. Some people say to me, I had a great day today. I'm like, no, 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 there's no great days. <laughs> in reality, there's great things and shit things that happen in every day. So I could have the greatest thing happen in a day and there'll still be some shit. I could have the shittest thing that happened in a day and there'll still be some good. And I think that's life. Uh, and, you know, I really believe in seeking upside in the downside and downside in the upside and having that uh, self-awareness and, and that um, balance to know that, hey, look, when you're being challenged, you're learning a lot, you're growing. There's probably a lot of good things happening in your business that you're missing. Um, and then also conversely, when things are going really well, don't take your eye off the ball, don't relax, don't spend all your money, don't go on loads of holidays, um, because uh, you will get blindsided. 
Uh, and sometimes when things are going well, you take your foot off the gas. Sometimes when things are going well, you're getting complacent and comfortable. And of course, that's what we all want to feel, don't we? But in reality, I, I kind of like to have that little edge of fear. I like to never quite be, um, you know, everything perfectly well oiled. Uh, and of course, this part of my inner um, comfort zone that would love that. Oh, man, why can't I just have all the money and none of the problems? But in reality, I like to always be on the edge because it tests me. It pushes me, makes me go to the next level. It makes me figure stuff out. And I get a lot of satisfaction when I figure something out and I can create something disruptive or innovative in my space and I can serve my clients and, you know, go to that next level of income. And, you know, when you've been in um, a training business like mine for nearly 15 years, you get new challenges because, yeah, we're the biggest in, in the country for property training. We are. But there's a lot of ankle biters coming to get us. There's a lot of people disrupting us. Uh, every, you know, we're more well known now, so it's more mature. So more and more people have been to our events and, you know, followed our content. So, you know, like finding new people is not as easy for us. Uh, we continually increase our marketing. Our overheads go up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Like uh, we had a million pound overhead month. We regularly have seven, seven hundred fifty thousand pound a month expenses. So, woo! You know, so um, now look, we're bigger now. We're making a more of a difference now. We're having deeper impact now. We make more money now. I've got such a great team now. We have 85 staff now. You know, the podcast reached, reaches, what, 202 countries. We've got nine income streams. Our letting agency manages over 800 properties. But you know what? I, I'm quite romantic about how great it was in year one where Mark and I didn't have any of that, but all we had was dreams and excitement. And, you know, when you, when you make a grand or five grand, it's, damn, it's fucking exciting. Like someone could give me a hundred grand now and it's like not exciting. Uh, it needs to be a lot more. Uh, and when I, I remember that first sale, three grand in the bank. Yeah, baby, we're living the dream. We're, gonna, we're going to London. One day I'm going to own a Lambo. Mark's going to own a Ferrari. And it was really exciting building it all and having that. And a lot of people in the early years, they forget to be fucking excited about it. They forget to enjoy it. They forget to breathe it in because they're always like, oh, I want more money. I want more reach. I want more impact. Uh, you know, I want to beat the competition. I'll be, I'll be happy when I'm there and then you get there. I'll be happy when I'm there and when you get there. I'll be happy when I'm there and when you get there. So it's almost like you've got to... Yeah, you've got to hustle. Yeah, you've got to be relentless, but you've got to stop and breathe it in and smell the roses. Ah, and um, entrepreneurs are pretty bad at that often. It's always more, 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 next level. So the paradox is, you know, chase the bigger vision. Break through your ceilings. Chase the bigger, you know, um, targets of revenue. Chase the growth. But every moment in the journey, enjoy it. Enjoy the small things and the big things. Um, enjoy everything. Uh, breathe every day in. Because, man, it goes quickly. It's like when you're a parent. Give me a yes if you're a parent on the live stream. And you're like, oh, man, you know, I can't wait till they're like, whatever age I can watch them go. I watched my son go and play percussion today, which was great. Um, and be it, by the way, running your own business means you can do that. I've rarely missed an assembly or um, percussion or, you know, sport or anything like that that Bobby's wanted me to go to because I work for myself and I'm, I'm, I'm able to do that. That's a great thing about being an entrepreneur. But some entrepreneurs never do that because they're working too hard. It's not all about the hustle. It's all about wellness, longevity, consistency. Um, it, it's about working smart. It's about working deep. It's about working on the right things. It's about focusing on the key result areas and the income generating tasks. All these things that a lot of people, you know, they, they're just all about the hustle and then they end up burning out. And you know what? In 15 years, I've seen a load of people come. Uh, the dog humping the tree. The dog humping the tree. The dog is rumping, humping the tree really fucking hard. Look at that dog humping the tree fucking hard. And then it burns out and then it's gone. Bye. And then the next dog comes, up the tree again, up the tree again, up the tree again, up the tree again. I'm humping this tree so fucking hard. Look at me humping this tree. Except you ain't making puppies humping trees. Bye. Uh, so you know what? It's not always about speed. Um, or at least it's not always about the hustle. Um, it's sometimes about uh, the great idea, the great conversation, listening to people, figuring stuff out, um, you know, watching, observing, calculating, researching, crowdsourcing, getting involved in your um, communities, taking feedback uh, and all these things. And that's not hard work. Like being an um, entrepreneur is the easiest hard work I've ever done. I used to clean fucking toilets when I was 15 years old. That was hard work. That was shit work. Um, and I only did it for about three months. Didn't fucking last. Um, 
But that's hard work. This is not being an entrepreneur. What I do is not hard work. But sometimes it's relentless and sometimes it batters your brain. And sometimes what is hard is the responsibility. You know, what is hard is the, um, the challenges, the unexpected, the blindsiding. Sometimes the relentlessness. Like I probably had six or seven big things um, hit me in the last sort of two weeks. But let's have it all. Bring it all. If there's anything else, bring it. Um, and then we can fix it. So if you want to shout out for your business, your brand, your podcast, your Facebook page, um, your Facebook group, your website, then hit me up with 500 stars and I will shout you out. Adam, thank you for the 100 stars. It was lovely to see you today. Steve, you've done your 500 stars now. Thank you. Sam Adams, she's running an event. Thank you for your 500 stars. You are awesome. Roger, thank you for your 100 stars. I'll be seeing you at Business Breakthrough Summit as well. Um, yeah, so um, Cheryl has put persistence question mark. I think there's a, um, a, a big balance between persistence and patience. And I think being persistent is important. Being resilient is important. Um, but too pushy can end up um, you getting frustrated or clients or community members or um, suppliers or partners getting uh, frustrated with you because you're too persistent and you end up pushing them back. Um, and sometimes you need to know when to back off and be patient and let it happen. And uh, you know what? I've been working a lot on letting it happen rather than making it happen. That's another paradox of being an entrepreneur. What do you let happen? What do you make happen? What do you let go? What do you get involved in? What do you um, outsource? What do you micromanage? Because Grant Cardone was saying when I was interviewing him, look, there's some things I've, I'm, I'm micromanaging because this is my business. You've got to know what to micromanage and what not. Um, you know, when, when to step in, when to step back. And man, you know, that's, that's business and that's a challenge. And I, I get it wrong quite a lot of the time. Um, made two or three mistakes in the last 10 days. You know, they, I think they came from a, a good space, but made some mistakes. Probably um, didn't manage my diary quite as well as I could. Probably took my eye off the ball on a couple of things. And you know what? Just because you've been doing it 15 years does not mean that tomorrow you're not going to make a mistake. And it does not mean that anyone owes you anything. Um, but let me remind you of all the good things. Made more money than ever being an entrepreneur. Like we've done more than 100 million pounds in sales. Uh, bought more properties than ever. We bought hundreds of properties. Hi, you know, I've got loads of people in my team, uh, about 80, 85, if you include, include our letting agency, which is downstairs, which, you know, there's a lot of leverage in that. There's a great ethic. There's a great culture. There's a great dynamic. There's a great energy. Um, I don't feel alone because I've got all these people. I've got a great business partner. Um, all the great things that I've done in my life, the travel, the cars, um, the watches, the houses, um, you know, whatever else, that's all thanks to being an entrepreneur. And, and um, Cheryl's t- just put the word, she's thank you, I got the balance between persistence and patience, that's great. But talking about balance, that's something that entrepreneurs find hard, you know, work-life balance. I was pr- pretty good at martial arts um, 15 years ago, and then when I started in business, I just didn't do it anymore, and I haven't done it since, and I do regret that. Uh, and some of my friends I've maybe not stayed in touch with as much as I maybe would like. And that's on me, by the way. That's not business or being an entrepreneur. That's on me managing my time and managing my key life areas. Because you've got key life areas, key result areas, income generating tasks. Uh, and I, I probably got to the point in, in business where I just convinced myself I needed to work hard, 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 hard. And, um, you know, probably my key life areas went a bit to shit. And actually, thinking back to the years where we've made the most money, I have worked the least hard. But I have always been on how to come up with ideas or solve problems or float around, not being too busy. I've worked the least hard. Um, And, you know, when I've been able to support my team, because as an an entrepreneur, you're a supporter. Um, And people think that as an entrepreneur, people support them. But the more people you support, the more people you've got working for you. Um, but that's also a, reality, a, 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 a myth and not a reality because people think, oh, well, you know, people work for me when I'm an entrepreneur. They don't. You work for them. If you have the mindset that you work for them, you serve them, you support them, then, yeah, OK, sometimes they could become a bit of a diva and a bit entitled, a bit, a bit spoiled. But, um, hey, look, they do a good job, you get paid. you got 80 staff doing a good job, you get paid a lot. you got 800 staff doing good jobs, you get paid a fuck of a lot. So actually, stop seeing that everyone's there to support you and start seeing that you're there to support them. And your business will grow because you are a bottleneck. You are a bottleneck because you can only do 10 hours a day and you can't even do 10 hours a day productively. You could probably only do five. So when there's 15 hours a day work to do, you're going to break. Um, and that's where the consistency, uh, the consistency is so underrated. People are always talking about persistence and relentlessness and hustle and stuff like that. But actually consistent, a bit slower, 
but for a lot fucking longer. Like, dog, hump the right tree. Uh, or don't hump a tree at all. Hump another dog. Um, so a bit slower, but the right decision, doing the right thing for a long time. That is about what being successful is all about. Not being distracted by competition. You know, I'm, I'm triggered and emotional and reacting and angry um, and getting like the focus in the wrong place and, you know, running the wrong race, someone else's race, chasing the wrong dream, someone else's dream. All these things. You can work really hard doing all that and go down the wrong freaking road. Okay, has anyone got any questions for me? I love you all, by the way. Um, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being a fan and a supporter. Hit me up with, with some stars if you want to shout for your business, your brand, your podcast, your website, your uh, Facebook group, whatever link it is. If you're watching the replay, you can do that too. Just um, write what you do in your comment. 500 stars gets you that, which is just $5 to me. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions for me, let me know. I love being an entrepreneur, even when it's hard. Um, I, I love fixing problems, even when I don't want the problem. Um, I love making a difference, even when I'm getting some challenge or some critic online, which is always happening now, by the way, just because of my scale and my reach. But the, the fans outweigh the critics by like a factor of 100 to 1. The good outweighs the bad for me by a factor of 10 to 1. Um, the money outweighs the problems by a factor of 10 to, to 1. There's a lot of responsibility now, a lot of overhead, a lot of stuff, but I take that seriously and I enjoy that. And yeah, there's risk, but where there's risk, there's reward. Uh, And can you have all the dreams that you want being an entrepreneur? Yes, and don't fucking let anyone tell you otherwise. And if there's people that do not want you to succeed and do not want you to win, then get them out of your life. And if people tell you it can't be done and it's impossible, um, then, you know, it just means they don't know how. It doesn't mean it can't be done. Anyway, we're getting late now. It's my bedtime. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything. If you want a shout out, I'm gone. So you're just going to need to put your link, your website, your podcast, your business, your brand in the comments uh, and hit me up with 500 stars in the process. I love you all.